Buenos días, señorita. Buenos días, señor. ¿Cómo han estado? Ya nomás, qué rosa más linda. Pero solo está perteneciendo en el jardín que no pertenece. Sí, pero bellezas como esta pertenecen a todos. ¿Qué do you want? What do you have, señor? ¡Ándale, Juan! ¡Súbete! ¡Vámonos! ¡Vámonos! Bájese. Bájese. Ándale. ¿Qué es esto? My brothers, we were in mortal danger and we didn't even know it. Madre mía. And what we have here? Pretty. Amigo, vámonos. Ándale. Ándale. And what do you have to give, lovely señorita? Mi hermano, to look upon her as a gift itself. You are music for my lonely soul, señorita. I don't hear any music. That is easily remedied, señorita. Juan, the guitar. Sí, hombre, cómo no. Señorita. Come. bird is frightened. I will not hurt you. Relax. You want, let us go. That may take some time, senor. <laughs> George, help me. Yes, sir. Like a room with a bath, please. Yes, sir. Got one just newly painted. Cost you uh, $3, though. Well, I guess a man ought to treat himself to the very best every now and then. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, have the Mendoza brothers checked in yet? The Mendoza brothers? Uh-huh. They're supposed to meet me here. No, sir. 
Nobody by that name is registered at this hotel. You're sure? Positive. Well, they'll be checking in a little later. When they do, let me know right away, will you please? Yes, sir. Are you dining alone, sir? Unfortunately. And that's one of my tables. Looks just lovely. You better be careful, young lady. You're going to spoil me. I bet you're used to that. Now, let's see. What's exciting? Well, the pie roast is good, and there's a dance later. <laughs> well, now, maybe I better try both, in that order. My name's Sally. Hello, Sally. Sue? Guess I have to start somewhere. Jared? Well, George Akers. I thought that was you. How are you? It's Fine. nice to see you. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, you had dinner? I right, just finished, thanks. Uh oh. Well, how have you been? Splendid. You? Oh, can't complain, I guess. How's the law business here in Baker City? Oh, last week I defended a drunk who kicked a pig. <laughs> How'd you do? I got him a like fine. Told the judge my client thought the pig was a mad dog. <laughs> When'd you arrive? Oh, a couple of hours ago. To see the Mendoza brothers. Well, yes, as a matter of fact. Do you know them? Oh, I just met them very briefly. They said they were here to meet you. What do you mean, we're here? They left. They left? Uh-huh. Well, I don't understand. They were coming here to buy some vineyard land from me north of town. Where the devil did they go? They probably went back to Mexico. They came in a couple days ago. Looked at the land, decided they didn't want it. Asked me to tell you about it. Well, I'll be... That doesn't make any sense. They sent me a $300 deposit. What'd they say about that? They understood it would be forfeited. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Jared. After all, you did everything you could to hold up your side of the bargain. Well, I suppose you're right about that. Oh, by the way, how's your lovely wife, uh... Alicia? Fine. She's visiting her mother in Kiowa for a couple of days. Oh, we'll be sure and give her my regards. I'll do that. Well, it's good to see you, Jared. It's good to see you. If you get caught kicking any pigs before you leave town, give me a call. Yeah. Well, Sally, thanks to you, I guess my trip won't be a total waste. What time do we trip the life fantastic? Huh? The dance we were talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, I'll bet you're real good on the dance floor, too. But I think I'm going to have to beg off. Oh? Well, to tell you the truth, it, it's been a long, hard day, and I'm kind of tired. That happened kind of suddenly, didn't it? Well, I, I've been on my feet since 6 o'clock this morning. I, I, I guess it just came over me all of a sudden. I'll get the rest of your supper. Good evening. If I walk you home, I'd like to talk to you. About what? Well, for one thing, the Mendoza brothers. Who are the Mendoza brothers? Oh, you don't know them? Why would I? No reason, I guess. Tell me something. Why didn't you change your mind so suddenly about that dance? I told you I was tired. Seems to me you didn't get tired until George Akers came over to the table. What did he have to do with it? Well, I don't exactly know. It's just that I've been getting kind of strange reactions from people around here every time I mention the Mendoza brothers. I don't know what you mean. I don't exactly know either. I was hoping maybe you could help. You're a nice man, Mr. Barclay. I appreciate you walking me home. But I make it a point to keep out of other people's affairs. You ask too many questions, you usually get hurt. Sally. Now, that's usually a pretty good rule, but I... I follow it. Bye, Mr. Barclay. Tom. 
I heard you were in town. I was wondering if you were going to drop by. Well, I guess I would have gotten around to it sooner or later. Uh, how's your mom? Oh, fine, fine. Everybody's fine. Good, good. You know, uh, George Akers was saying that you were asking about those three brothers. Did you see them, Tom? Well, they rode in briefly, rode right out again. Just can't understand why they wouldn't at least send a telegraph. Let me know. Well, you know how the Mexicans are. No, how are they? Oh, well, what I mean is, uh, well, they probably got homesick. Decided to forget the whole thing. I wouldn't worry too much about it if I were you. Nice talking to you, Tom. You too, you too. Uh, Jared? I suppose you'll be leaving in the morning, huh? Well, I wouldn't bother you if I just hung around for a couple of days, would it, Tom? Well, why should it bother me? That's right. Why should it? Mr. Barclay. Yes, what is it? Dirk Sampson. How do you do? Just fine. Hey, wait a minute now. You better relax, Mr. Barkley, or you're going to end up with a hole in your head. That's a little better. And now that we have got your attention, what's this little meeting all about? Now, that's Sally. You see, Sally's my girl. And I don't appreciate the fact of uh, you walking her home the way you did. Uh, if she's your girl, she sure keeps it a secret. You hurt my feelings with that kind of talk, Mr. Barclay. I'll, I'll tell you what I think the best thing is all around. Go home, Mr. Barclay. Go home first thing in the morning. And I'm sure with you out of the way why me and Sally, well, we would get along just fine. What do you think about that, Mr. Barclay? Well, I guess uh, he agrees, fellas, because he sure ain't arguing. Let him go. Remember, Barkley, you're leaving. First thing in the morning. just ran into an acquaintance of yours. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your boyfriend who seems to think I'm pushing in on his territory. I haven't got any boyfriend. Are you sure of that? Positive. Well, I I've only been here for a month. That's what I thought. Whoever it was must have been drunk or something. Oh, no. Nobody was drunk. They were just using you to give me a little message. You must be imagining things. Now listen, uh, Sally, I'm not imagining my ribs being kicked in. This town wants me out. Why? Listen, somebody beats you up. That's your business. The magic word anything. is Mendoza, the three brothers who just rode in and rode out. You heard it. Where are they? I don't know. You're lying. No, no. Listen to me, please. You've been warned. Now leave it alone. If you don't, your life will do wind up dead. And that's the only thing that's going to stop me from asking questions. Well, then ask somebody else. I'm asking you. No, leave me out. Yes, well, I had enough, and I heard enough to keep you up all night if I have to. No, I want answers. What are you talking about? They were lynched. They killed a woman. They raped her, and they killed her. Was there a trial? No. Where was the sheriff? He was there, watching with the rest of us.
didn't work, Tom. But... What are you talking about, Jared? I'm talking about the three you sent to rough me up. It only made me more curious. And now I've got the answer. Well, two days ago, George and Alicia were in their buggy about 10 miles out of town. Three of them pulled the buggy off the road and... They started... They made her dance with them. Then when they started putting their hands on her, I went crazy. They knocked me out. When I came to, Alicia was gone. So was the buggy. There were bloodstains on the ground. And I put a posse together and went out right away. But I couldn't find anything. Then the next day, the three of them rode into town. They checked into the hotel to wait for you. I guess they never figured the one man who could identify them lived here. Then everybody went sort of crazy. They, they grabbed a rope and... Well, short of shooting every man in town, I, I, I couldn't stop it, Jared. I'd like to read you to a letter that was written by one of the men you hanged. says, Senor Barkley, we have heard of you and your family for many years in Mexico. The Barkley name is honored and respected, so we are very proud that you have agreed to sell us your land in the beautiful California. We've worked many years to save the money needed. We want to become citizens of your country, to earn the love and respect of your people. Now I ask you, does this letter sound like it could be written by a man who would do this? They did it. They held me and made me watch. I pleaded with them. I told them to kill me, but please don't hurt her. But they just laughed at me and said one filthy thing after another. Don't blame Tom. If I had it to do over again, I'd have led the lynching myself. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll say good night. Jared, you live by the law all your life. And so have I. I'm sorry this had to happen in my town. I really am. But I'm not going to blame myself too much for it. The whole thing doesn't make any sense. They say it happened about 10 miles out of town. About that. I just can't understand why those three would ride in here when they knew Akers could identify them. Now, what are you getting at? Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I just can't understand why they'd kill her and not him. Doesn't add up. No, a killer never does. Especially by those kind. What kind is that, Tom? Well, those Mexicans, of course. Of course. you want? Is Mr. Akers in? He's gone. Had to see a client. The man who kicked the pig? What? Never mind. I'll wait. He may be some time, Mr. Barclay. You know me? Everybody knows you. So it would seem. Mr. Barclay, they killed Mrs. Akers in cold blood and for no reason except to satisfy their lust. They deserved to be hanged. They deserved a fair trial. 
You surely don't believe those three were innocent. Mr. Akers recognized them plain as day. Yes, yes, so he says. It's just that there are a couple of little things I don't quite understand. Mr. Barclay, why don't you go away? Why don't you leave Mr. Akers alone? Hasn't he gone through enough in the last seven years? The last seven years? I didn't mean that. I meant that... that the poor man has had a terrible tragedy and people shouldn't be poking their noses in at such a time. How long were the Akers married? Seems to me it was about seven years, wasn't it? How'd they get along all that time? I mean, was there any... any little trouble between them? I won't answer that. I think you already have. Maybe I had better come back at another time. As you say, it might be a long wait. Well, what's wrong? Last night I was rereading this letter, Tom. Oh, now look, Jared. Now what's the point in going over it again? You've never heard the second page. Meaning what? Does Akers speak Spanish? No. But he claimed all three Mexicans spoke to him, right? Yes. All right. Now, this letter was written by the oldest Mendoza brother. At the end of it, he apologizes for the fact that he was the only one who could speak or write English. Uh, one of them did all the talking. Other two just uh, jabbered away in Spanish. I just figured it was because they were, they were scared or, or excited. Or they couldn't speak English. Uh, look, Jack, now why would Akers, uh, why would Akers identify them if they weren't the three who did it? I don't know. Possible he made a mistake. It's also possible there never were any Mexicans. Are you suggesting that Akers killed Alicia himself? Kind of sounds that way, doesn't it? Oh, Jared, you're really on the wrong track. Oh, he was crazy about her. Oh, he showed her off all the time. I just had a talk with his housekeeper. She gave me the definite impression that there was trouble between them. Oh, she's an old busybody. Why, she's been jealous of Alicia ever since the day Akers brought her home. You can't put any store in her. And as for Akers saying that all three of them spoke English, well, that's an understandable mistake. He was in a state of shock when it happened. All I'm asking you to do is consider the possibility. That I hung three innocent men? Not likely, Jared. Not likely at all. You afraid to dig a little deeper? Now, how would I do that? Let's find Alicia's body. I looked for it. Then let's look again. Now, what'll that prove? I don't know. But if she was assaulted before she was murdered, that'll show. And if she was just plain murdered, that'll show, too. You willing to face up to the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I know the truth. But if you need proof... I do, Tom. And down in your guts, you need it, too. <laughs> goes to Rock Creek. That's where Akers and his wife were supposed to be coming from. Uh-huh. You go up there with a the posse? I covered the whole area. Didn't find anything. You know, Tom, a fellow who might have murdered his wife isn't going to be likely to want the law to find her body, is he? Meaning he could have misdirected us. Meaning we better try this way. like Akers' buggy. Hello there. Where'd you get this buggy? Who's asking? Sheriff Hayes, Baker City. Sheriff, huh? Too bad you didn't come nosing around when the bargaining was going on. What bargaining? Three Mexicans two days ago said they wanted to trade that buggy. Three Mexicans? That's what I said. Just two days ago with this buggy? Which I didn't want. These Mexicans, what'd they look like? Like Mexicans. I mean, would you be able to recognize them if you saw them again? I'd sure recognize one of them, sitting there on that Palomino with one of them fancy silver saddles. I won't forget that one. 
What kind of supplies were they after? Oh, trail supplies, food, blankets, stuff I couldn't spare. I take it then you weren't exactly in favor of the trade. That's exactly what I mean. But this grinning Mexican had a gun, so there wasn't nothing I could do. You here to get my stuff back? Now, which way did they go when they left? South. Thanks for your help. You can thank me by bringing my stuff back. I sure don't need that buggy. Jared. They were the ones. That sounds that way, doesn't it, Tom? And I hung three innocent men. Now, how do I fix it? How do I live with a thing like that? They can't be far. We just get them, that's all. What's inside me? What I did? Catching them won't change that. No, it won't. But it's a start. to a doctor. No. No doctor can fix this. Oh, right? sure they can. Oh, Jared. No. You just promise me you'll get it all straight. Ooh. You just rest easy, Tom. I'll get you some water. Someone right up. Nice to see you. He hungry? I could eat. Got beans or ham? Or both, if you got the courage. <laughs> A little joke. I ain't the best cook in the world, but I'm sociable. <laughs> I'll try the ham. Ham and spuds coming up. Get much traffic through here? I mean, other than the stage. Well, you might say I get about all of what comes through. Being I'm the only stop between here and Baker City. What about three men? Mexicans. One of them riding a Palomino with a fancy saddle. What about them? They come through here? What happened there? Bullet. Mr. Crease. One of those Mexicans? I think so. Look, mister. I make it a point never to get involved in anyone else's battles. I stay a lot healthier that way. They did come through here, then. You ain't hearing anything from me. 
Suit yourself. That's the way you feel. If you want to tend that arm, I got some astringent back here. It's all right. Taking care of itself. Hey, uh, you want to hear a funny story the stage driver told me this morning? Not particularly. Those three Mexicans. <sighs> what about them? It was yesterday they came through. Oh? Yeah. They were in a hurry. Bought some food, a couple bottles of whiskey. <laughs> I suppose they told you which way they were going. Well, they didn't actually make a point to tell me. Bet you heard, though, huh? As a matter of fact, I heard one of them say they were headed for the border. How much do I owe you? You didn't finish it. Oh, it's like you said. How's that? You're a lot better at talking than cooking. I said, on your feet. Senor, what is the meaning of this? You're coming with me back to Baker City. We're going to have a little talk with the law. There must be some mistake. No mistake. We have done nothing except share the stars. It is true, senor. We're just plain vaqueros. Why would the law want us? A murder. We have murdered no one. No one except Sheriff Hayes and Alicia Akers. But you have come a long way for nothing. That's right, Mr. Barkley. Alicia? Yes? I thought you were dead. Who told you that? Your husband. He told the whole town that you'd been raped and murdered by these three. My husband lied. I left him. I went with Francisco willingly. And George watched me go. You went with them willingly? Three Mendoza brothers rode into Baker City to see me on business. Your husband told everybody they were the ones that stopped your buggy and murdered you. They lynched him. That makes no sense. He didn't want anybody to find you with them. He hanged three innocent men just to protect his reputation. 
You always did have excellent perception, Jerry. The gun. Over here. All right, George. Just tell me one thing, will you? Why'd you have to murder Hayes? I was sorry I didn't get you too, Jared. Then when you headed south, I figured you had an idea where these four were, so I followed. Is a reputation really worth all this, George? You think you could stand being laughed at everywhere? That's all that's ever mattered to him, not looking the fool. Appearing to be an upright citizen, a perfect husband and a gentleman. Only I knew different. Because when he couldn't feel that he was a man outside the house, then he'd slap me around and that made him feel really important. You've no idea what it was like, living like that. You had everything a woman could want. I had nothing. Oh, I could tell you stories. Once he went into a rage like a little boy because the mayor didn't invite him to his birthday party. He nearly cried. Running true to form. You dare talk to me after what you've done? After what I've done? What I've tried to do is get away from you. I asked for a divorce once. That was impossible. Not proper. The right people would talk. They might even ask questions. He said that he'd kill me if I ever mentioned it again. You should have killed him, my love. Your love. You did what no man can do to me. You. Nothing. Thief. Animal. If I am those things, senor, then you must be worse, or she would not have left you. I would have shot you sooner. From out there. But that would have been too gracious. Now you can die slowly. And you can watch, just like you made me watch. Stay where you are! George! the facts. What does that mean? It means he's got the facts. Would you like me to ride out with you a little way? Francisco's waiting for me. Alicia, are you sure you know what you're doing? George made me feel cold and empty. Francisco doesn't. Simple as that, huh? Simple as that. Goodbye, Jerry. Mr. Barclay, well, what I did, what we all did, uh, the fact is we thought we were doing the right thing. Well, I've I only been here a month. You learn quick. What about us? You'll have to live with yourselves.
Good morning. I think our sign is all wrong. Nothing wrong with that sign. Uh, the print's too small. I just went by my Garrett's and they're signing him right and left. Uh, well, it doesn't have anything to do with the sign. Why don't you pour yourself a cup of coffee? I don't want any coffee. I want men. I have a whole fruit crop to harvest, and McGarrett and the others are signing them like they're giving something away for nothing. Uh-huh. By the way, are you questioning these people like you're getting them ready for jury duty? Jury duty? What are you talking about? Well, word is going around town that you're practically cross-examining these people. Now, look, Nicholas, you said to me, get me the right men. Now, that's what I'm trying to do. Isn't that what you want? I want men. Any man who is ready, willing, and able to work, I would like to have. Now, if you see one of these, grab them, hold them, and sign them. But do me a favor, will you? What's that? But don't ask them any questions. All right, Nick. Fine. Just, just passing through. I heard Don Salinas, they're looking for hands up here. Oh, no, you can't believe everything you hear, Waldo. Hey, look, welcome Harvest Hands. Best pay, come in, sign up now. No, no I, I just been in there. They all signed up, have been for days. Yeah, but those men there. Oh, poor fools, they're gonna get the same sad story I got. Yeah, but... I want to tell him to take this sign down. I just ought to do it. I hear that there's another place right down the street that's got a couple of openings. Now, why don't you hurry on down there, Waldo, and get them before they all taken up? I'll run back in here. I'll tell this fella, take a sign down, and I'll meet you down there. Now, go on. Go on. Hurry Well, up. thanks, Eli. Gee, thanks. You sure are swell to put me on to this. Thanks, Eli. Hey, what's the big idea? That man's looking for work, isn't he? That's right. You hired him, and I quit. They ain't a ranch in California big enough to hold the two of us. to me. Yeah? He's worse than any gunfighter you ever heard of. Because with a gunfighter, you got a chance to draw. With him, there's no way to defend yourself because you don't know when or where nor how it's coming. What's his game? His game is bad luck. He's a Joner. Last town he worked in burned down the very day after he arrived. And the last ranch you worked on, the steers got mixed in with the neighbor's sheep. They had been peace in that county for 10 years. And the day he left, there was a full-scale range war going on. You don't say. Oh, Mr. McGarrett, I sure do. Everywhere he goes, there's trouble. And nobody in his right mind would work anywhere near him. And that's a fact. Uh, that's, uh, Waldo Diefen? Diefendorfer. Waldo Diefendorfer. Once you repeat it a couple times, <clears throat> I guess it's still kind of hard to say. <laughs> yes, well, good luck, Mr. Diefendorfer. You too. Lots of it. Now, you boys, stop that. Now, cut it out. One of you is going to get hurt. <laughs> now, you cut that out. Hey, now, give me that. Now, get out on home. Hey.
made this place something. You know, Penelope, this could be the start of a whole new life for us. Let's go find the form. Come on. Pretty sight a cowboy ever did see. Yes, he's beautiful. Seems a shame to break him, though. Oh, don't you worry now, Miss Audra. I wasn't hired to ruin Barclay horses. I'm just gonna bend his spirit a little to yours. Catch him. I don't know. Oh, I'm Waldo Diefendorf. Audra Barkley. Oh, one of the Barkleys? <laughs> Gee, I'm sure glad all the other ranches were filled and I could come here. I'm looking for the foreman. That'd be my brother. Nick! Someone to see you! Like I said, I'm sorry about that horse that ran away. I hope it wasn't my fault. How could it be? You were just passing by. Sometimes that's enough. Yeah, Audra, what do you have? Uh, Nick, this is Mr. Dief Diefendorfer. How's that again? I'm Waldo Diefendorfer. I signed up in town to work here. Well, you, uh, bunk in bunkhouse number three. It's up by the house. Charlie will be in 15 minutes. Three? That could be my lucky number. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure meeting you, Miss Barkley. The stable your uh, burrow in the barn. Sir, could I stake her at the bunkhouse? Penelope likes to be with me late at night, and vice versa. Ah, uh, well, uh, yeah, suit yourself. Go ahead. I don't know. I just don't know. What? I don't know. Fellas, I'm Waldo. Don't bother about me. Just go on doing what you're doing. You can dump your gear over there. Oh, thanks. Sure. His name is Hank Deemers. I'm sort of put in charge here. Glad to have you with us. Thanks. Lots of give. Night. Nice. Yeah, the Barclays got the best beds in the valley. Chow ain't bad either. Yeah. You're lucky to sign out here. That's what I figured. Well, I guess your blanket's out back. Oh, you don't have to bother. There's no bother. We all work together here. One big happy family. Hey, uh... Don't I know you from somewhere? Uh-uh. You sure? Uh-huh. I ain't never been any place. I mean, that counts or anything. What'd you say your name was? Waldo. Your last name? Um, uh, Diefendorfer. Sounds kind of familiar. Oh, there are lots of Diefendorfers. The world's full of them. You got me mixed up with one of those. Somebody else. Could be. Tell me, Nick, how are you coming along with the harvest hands? Well, it looks like we've got a full crew, but... But what? You should know. You hired him deep and dapper. Deep and dorfer. Whatever. Brother Jared, I told you to sign on anybody. Scrape the bottom of the barrel if you had to, but come on. Deep and dorfer? Deep and dorfer. Waldo deep and dorfer. All right, all right. But does he look like a farmhand to you? Now, nah, Nick, what does a farmhand look like? Let's not have any courtroom tricks, lawyer man. Would someone mind letting me in on this? Brother Jared here signed on, um... Diefendorfer. 
Yeah, yeah, well, he doesn't know a peach from a ripe tomato. Now, Nick, that's cruel. Well, I should think the point is, can he do the job? Well, the odds against it. Nick, why don't you stop picking on him? He hasn't even had a chance to prove himself yet. Why don't you at least wait and see? Who knows? You may be in for the surprise of your life. Sugar. Morning. Yeah. Nice day. Yeah, it sure is. I'm glad you caught that runaway horse yesterday. It's a strange thing. I can't figure it out. It's the first time one ever cut out on me. Just can't figure it. Ours is not the reason why. Don't you agree? I guess. All right, your man, let's go. Now, Waldo, that means you too. Come on. If it's all the same to you, Mr. Nick, I'll ride Penelope. You'll ride with the rest of us. Come on, get aboard. That's what you want, sir. Three days have gone by, and it's been one thing after another. First, the transport wagon collapses. Mm, equipment wears off. That was a brand new wheel, and so was the axle brand new. And what about the next day when the ladder folded up and one of my men busted his arm? Don't tell me anything about that ladder, because it happened to be brand new, too. Seemingly. What about this afternoon when the freight wagon backed up too far and crushed 20 crates of fresh-picked fruit? Amen. What is that supposed to mean? What it usually means, the end. You've had your share of mishaps, so now it'll be clear sailing. You really expect me to believe that? I do. Wonderful. Mother, do you realize how many man hours we have wasted? Do you know how much money it has cost us? And do you happen to know where that puts McGuff? McGarrett. No. He could be responsible for all this bad oh, luck. Nick. I would not put it past Nick, him. Nick, I have known Frank McGarrett for over 25 years. Then you ought to know how he operates. Oh, he's a tough competitor, but he would never do anything like that. And that leaves who? Why does it have to leave anybody? Sunday afternoon. Sure is. I'm glad you rode by. If you don't mind my saying so. Not at all. Usually the men go into town Saturday night and stay over. Well, to tell you the truth, I kind of like to be alone sometimes. I think I know what you mean. You do? Mm -hmm. Funny, doesn't make a difference where you are or who's around. You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel exactly the same way. Me too. Of course, that's what Penelope included. Of course. Still, it's nice to have somebody to talk to. Sometimes. Like you, I mean. There are some people who make you feel to home right away. Like the first time I saw you, Miss Audra. I walked right up to you. Talked right to you. I don't usually speak to strangers especially the opposite sex. But I must admit, in your case, I made an exception. 
That's the honest truth. I'm very flattered. You are? Hey, Miss Audra. Been looking for you. Remember that herd of Mustangs I was telling you about? Yes. Well, it was spotted headed north. I think they're going towards Box Canyon. Want to ride with me? Do you really think you can find them? Well, if I can, no one can. Come on, let's go. I'll see you later, Waldo. Uh-huh. Penelope, if it wasn't your day off, we'd go out after those Mustangs, too. Hey, Sid, how about lend me some of your hair tonic? I'm all out. What for? What do you think for? You ain't going no place. <laughs> oh, no? Going up to the big house tonight. Come on, you couldn't get in the back door. And if you're talking about Miss Audra... That's exactly who I'm talking about. I'm taking her to the dance on Tuesday night. <laughs> this I gotta see. When you come to the dance on Tuesday night, you will see. Where is he? Let me at him. I knew it. I felt it. Where is he? Where's who? Diefendorfer. I told you there was something fishy about him tonight. Oh, Hank, don't start that all over again. What about that transport wagon breaking down? And Charlie falling off that ladder? And all those crushed crates of fruit that took us hours to pick? It's all his doing. He's a jinx. Sure. Go ahead, laugh. Who's laughing? The Garrett's men are in town. They're laughing themselves sick about it. One of them palmed off Diefendorfer on the Barclays. They know him from way back. They've given him a wide berth. Now we're stuck with him. Who knows what's going to happen next? Well, what do you aim to do? I don't know. You want some advice? Take it straight to the Barclays. It's their crop. Nick, you're not really going to go through with this silly test. The boys in number three are not kidding. And by tomorrow morning, it's going to spread to the other bunkhouses, and nobody's going to get even near this Waldo. Oh, he's just down in Modesto, and I've got this whole ranch to run all by myself. I've got crops to harvest, and I'm not taking any chances. The little test goes on. Nick, the whole thing is ridiculous. I will not let superstition run this ranch. Waldo wouldn't hurt a fly. Talk all you want, it doesn't change a thing. I happen to know there are real live Jonas. Now, don't ask me why. I don't know. It's just, it's just the way it is. Now, listen, sis. People like Waldo, they, well, they don't mean to hurt anybody. It's just that, well, calamity seems to follow him around like a hungry hound dog. And I am going to prove that Waldo Diefendorfer is a born loser. I'll get it. Come in, Waldo, please. Oh, my gosh! Oh! I nearly broke it. Somebody must have moved it. it. It was in the way. Oh, I don't know. Nice place you got here. Big, too. What is it your brother, Mr. Nick, wants to see me about? Well, actually, the whole family's in there. They all want to see me? Mm-hmm. Oh, what do you know? What's it all about? Well, it's a game, sort of. Oh. You know my brothers, Nick and Jared. Mr. Nick and Mr. Jared. And this is my mother. How do you do, Mr. Diefendorfer? Mrs. Barkley, it's a real pleasure, also an honor. Well, thank you, Mr. Dee. Friends call me Waldo. Bosses, too. Uh, Waldo, will you sit down here and join us for a minute, eh? Oh, yes, sir. We're going to cut for a high card. Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I never gamble. <laughs> well, there's no money involved. Then what? Waldo. Remember I mentioned a game? Oh, yeah. All right, I'll cut first. <laughs> a three. Your turn, Waldo. Yes, ma'am. A deuce. All right, let's try it again. Now, this time you cut first, Waldo. But... It's all right, just cut. A 
fool. It isn't over yet. Well, it is now. Read it and weep. All right, once more. Never tempt fate, Brother Jared. A king! Oh, Waldo, that's wonderful! It is? Well, now we look here at what I drew. Looks to me to be an ace. Enough. I still say it doesn't prove a thing. Thank you, Walter. Thank you very much for cooperating. That's the game? That's all? That's all. Well, would you like some coffee? Or some cookies? Well, gee, thanks. But I gotta get up early. A man can't be tired and do a full day's work. Boss is my complaint. Hmm. Night, everybody. Night, Miss Audra. <laughs> Jonah! Nick, now what did that prove? Three cuts of the card do not amount to a run of bad luck or the stroke of doom. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. This is a nice big piece. You better go now, Waldo. I guess I wasn't looking where I was going. I'm sorry. Night, folks. Jonah. I agree. Well? I'll uh, go along with Jared and Audra. Well, he is willing, isn't he? And honest and loyal. And, uh, uh, polite. Whose side are you all on, anyway? Well, just trying to be fair. What do I tell the hands out there? They want me to get Waldo off their backs. Oh, I'm not worried about that, Nick. You'll find the right words. <laughs> Give it another day or two. Ah, no, boy, Nick. After all, it can't get any worse. Who said? See you later. Take care. I can take a hint. Nobody has to hit me over the head, do they, Penelope? Now, let's see, Penelope. We've got to make some plans. First, we'll... Why does it always happen to me? What do I do that's so wrong? Oh, Miss Audra, this is a surprise. So is that. Well, I've been planning to leave. I've had the urge to move on. You know what they say, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Wait here, I'll be right back. Don't you look like something? Clay Howard loaned me his, uh, his best carriage and a horse you like. I figured a girl as beautiful as Audra Barkley should go to that dance and stuff. Don, I'm sorry I can't go. <laughs> what, what do you mean you can't go? Well, something very important has come up. Yeah, like what? 
It's personal, and, and it's an emergency. It's something I just have to do. Miss Audra, it's been very nice knowing you. If there's anything I can ever do for you, don't be afraid of calling me. Of course, I never know where I'll be. Me with the wanderlust and all. You're not leaving. I can't go back in there. Even if they begged, I wouldn't let you. There's a room off the barn. You can have your privacy, and Penelope can have her own stall. Come on, I'll show you. See you later, Penelope. Waldo, what do you think of dancing? Well, I only tried it once. Once? Well, you see, I stepped on this girl's foot. Well, that happens to practically every man. Not like me. I broke her toe. <laughs> from the main house, uh, leaving you waiting at the gate? She wasn't feeling well. That's all there was to it. Sure got uh, quick cures these days. What he's got that you haven't. Waldo, <laughs> wait here. I'll be right back. I want to talk to him. Wait, let me explain. Okay, don't you cancel me. You came with him. What's to explain? It's not that simple. He was locked out of the bunkhouse tonight. So? Heaven knows how many places he's been kicked out of, how many backs have been turned on him. Someone has to show they care. Someone has to welcome him back to the human race, and I... Well, I thought this would be one small way. I'm sorry if I hurt you. That wasn't my intention. Listen, do me one favor. Be careful of your toes. Please. Miss Audra? Yes? Remember Sunday out by the stream when I told you how much I like being by myself? Mm-hmm. Well, I gotta tell you now, there are a lot of times when I don't like it at all. To tell you the whole truth, most of the time I don't like it. Most of the times I like being someplace where it's crowded, where everybody's smiling and having a good time and liking each other, like now. To tell you the whole truth, most of the time, I'm just plain lonely. To tell you the whole truth, so are a lot of people. Tonight, it's kind of hard to tell the winners from the losers. Yeah? Well, I guarantee you one thing. When I get through, you won't have any trouble. and a delegation from Bunkhouse 3 paid me a visit. If it's about Waldo... Who else? This delegation was headed up by your friend Don Jarvis. Seems he wants to walk out and take 15 men with him. Why couldn't you have left well enough alone, Audra? Waldo's no stray dog, you know. 
Then why is he kicked around like one? Has that ever occurred to you? I'll pay him off. He won't take it. You think? He's not looking for charity. How do you know so much about this? All right, that's enough, both of you. Audra is right. Now, wait a minute. Well, so are you, in a way. So I'd say a compromise is in order. Such as? Well, it seems simple to me. Simple? The men will not work with Waldo in the orchard. We'll take him out of the orchard. And you, Audra, you say he won't accept charity. All right, we will find him a legitimate paying job. Now, there are plenty of those this time of year. I ask you, what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. That's what's wrong with it. He's still on this property. This is my property, Jarvis. This is Barkley property. Have it your way. But I want him off of here and fast. You want him off, huh? That's right. Now, you better leave a little room, Mr. Barkley. Because if he's not off of here by noon tomorrow, we will be. And more will follow. Well, now, let me let you in on something. If you, or you, or you, Hank, or any one of you walk from here, I'll see to it that not one of you get one hour's work in this whole valley. Who are you trying to block? You know these men got the pick of the places around here. As a matter of fact, I've already checked with McGarrett. They got a special invite to come over to his ranch anytime they want to. So you take your choice. Diefendorfer or them. Penelope, how do you like this for accommodations? Your own stall and my own room. No, it's real. It's not a dream. All the bad luck is behind us now. No more dark clouds. From now on, my fine friend, nothing but sunshine. Oh, no. Oh, no, it can't be. It, it never rains this time of year. It really means business this time. storm out there. I, uh, just came home to see if there was anything I could do to help. If you can stop time, fine. We got 35 minutes to deadline. Or else maybe you can figure a way to stop this rain. You mean to tell me those men out there really believe that Waldo started this storm? According to the last petition, 28 of them do, yes. Now, what you really mean is that that Jarvis fellow has got them believing it, right? I don't know what to believe now. What's this, Nick? You thinking of giving in? No, I'm just doing a lot of thinking, so. Well, while you are, think about this. You give some people an inch, Nick, and they take a mile. If I know you, you're not going to give anybody a mile, no matter what you're thinking right now, and you know it. All right, how do we win, Jared? <sighs> well, I don't know. Maybe it's more important sometimes, Nick, to, to know how to lose. Five to twelve. All right, all right. So where's Barkley? Any minute now, Barkley will be coming through the door, and that'll be the end of Waldo Diefendorfer. Wanna bet? Come here. Settling down for a long stay. Come on, listen to me. You can forget about. 
about those blankets Miss Audrey gave you, and you can forget everything the Barclays told you. You're getting out of here. Yeah, but... No but! You pack up your gear, you get on that mangy bar, and you ride. Now, come on, move! Let him go! Don't you know when you've had enough? <laughs> you'd be doing this. What can I do? Well, first, have a better opinion of yourself. Have some faith in you. How can I, when from the day I was born, I brought bad luck? Even that day, after the doctor delivered me, he fell down the porch steps and broke his leg. That was his bad luck, not yours. I don't want to cause any trouble here. I don't believe you. That's just your excuse. The fact is, you're feeling sorry for yourself. You always have. You're not running to help anybody. You're running because you're a coward. You're not noble, and, and you're not a man. You're just a sheep leading yourself to slaughter. Why don't you for once stand your ground? Why don't you for once try a little faith? Oh, what's the use? She doesn't understand, Penelope. I wouldn't dare, but I just got to ask you now. You see, I can't go on like this anymore. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't want to. Besides, I can't be someone else, can I? I mean, a person is stuck with being what he is, right? But I need your help now. Nothing big or important. Just a little something. Please. Yours truly, Waldo Diefendorf. I never expected anything this big. Especially the first time. Gee, thanks, sir. You know, Waldo, this is the best season we ever had. Me too, Hank. Look, uh, me and the boys are headed north for the Feather River. How about joining us? Sure, friend. Great. Wouldn't want to lose our good luck charm. Hear that, Miss Audra? You brought me a change of luck. Change of fate. Oh, yeah. See you. 
See you, Walter. Oh, here I go again. It's not what you think, Waldo. Nick's up there diamiting. We're just bringing water down from the high lake. Oh. See you. Bye. Goodbye.